Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a system of equations. RE represents the real part of Z and IM represents the imaginary part and we have the system of equations. I'll be presenting two methods even though I would be curious about a third one if it exists. So let's get started. First method I'm going to just use the standard form because that's pretty typical. So let's replace Z with A plus BI, right? So from here, automatically, the real part of Z is going to be A, and the imaginary part of Z is going to be B. And let's go ahead and plug everything into these equations. Z multiplied by real part of Z is going to be A plus BI multiplied by A equals 9 plus 12i and a plus bi multiplied by b equals 12 plus 16i. Now what can I do with this? Let's go ahead and distribute a times a is a squared. That's going to give me a squared plus a b i equals 9 plus 12i and a b plus b squared i equals 12 plus 16i. Now from here we can get the following. Set the real parts equal. A squared equals 9. That's one of the equations we get. AB equals 12. And B squared equals 16. There is no reason to repeat AB. It's the same thing. Now, if you solve the first equation, A squared equals 9, there are two solutions. Either A is equal to 3 or negative 3. Since a times b is equal to 12, if a is equal to 3, then b equals 4. If a is equal to negative 3, b is equal to negative 4. Basically, the value of b depends on a and vice versa. And since we wrote our z, and by the way, uh, these two values also satisfy, obviously, the third equation, and it should. Otherwise, it's not, it's not going to be consistent. So based on these a, b values, we can go ahead and write two solutions. Since z is a plus bi, there are two solutions. z sub 1, if you want, you can call it that, 3 plus 4i, and z sub 2 is going to be negative 3 minus 4i. Notice that they are opposites, not conjugates. Okay? So there are two solutions to this equation, and that's it for the first method. If you want to check your work, you can always do so. If you just want to plug in, you'll see that it satisfies the original equation. Okay? Second method, again, our equations are z times the real part of z is 9 plus 12i, and z times the imaginary part of z is 12 plus 16i. And we're going to solve for z. So, let's go and take a look. Why can't I just divide these equations, right? And when I do, z is going to cancel out. Nice. But not only that, on the right-hand side, we can factor out 3 and 4. And this time, 3 plus 4i cancel out, which is nice. And now we end up with something like this. So there's a ratio between the real part and the imaginary part so that this equation or the system is satisfied. Since our e is, or real part is, uh, proportional to 3 and imaginary is proportional to 4, we can kind of write it as follows. Real part, let it be 3k, and imaginary part, let it be 4k. So that the 3 to 4 ratio is maintained. Make sense? But z is made up of the real and imaginary parts. In other words, we can write the z as real z plus imaginary z multiply by i, right? That's how you can write a complex number. So z becomes 3k plus 4ki. What can I do with this? Plug into one of these equations. What does the first equation say? The first equation says z times the real part of z is 9 plus 12i. Let's go ahead and plug it in. z is 3k plus 4ki. And we're going to multiply that by the real part of z, which is 3k, this one right here, and that should equal 9 plus 12i. So the main difference between the first and the second method is here we only have one variable. 
which is k. Why? Because we were able to get the ratio of a to b. Okay? Let's go ahead and distribute. We get 9k squared plus 12k squared i equals 9 plus 12i. Isn't that kind of obvious like what k is going to be? But let's still solve for k. So setting the real parts equal 9k squared equals k 9. That gives us k squared equals 1. And setting the imaginary parts equal gives us 12k squared equals 12. This needs to be consistent, by the way. Otherwise, there are no solutions. From here, we get two results. k is either 1 or negative 1. If k is equal to 1, now you got to remember, z was written as, what, 3k plus 4ki. Z is 3k plus 4ki. So if k is equal to 1, then z becomes 3 plus 4i. And if k is equal to negative 1, then, I'll probably write it here, if z is equal to, I mean, if k is equal to negative 1, then z becomes negative 3 minus 4i. And again, we got the same solutions as before. Do you think there's a third method? Please let me know. And this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.